and today's lesson is on dilution, evaporation, and mixing. So today let's talk about uh, diluting solutions, evaporating solutions, and mixing solutions together. So here's the idea about diluting solutions. We add some distilled water, some known volume of a known concentration of solution, and mix that up. After doing so, you'll get here, after mixing, you get the second solution. And the question is, of course, what's the concentration of the now diluted solution? Well, the main idea, of course, is that distilled water doesn't contain solutes. Therefore, adding or removing distilled water doesn't really change the number of moles of solute that are present in the solution. So, got that idea in hand, let's just try here an example. Imagine we had a liter of half molar uh, sodium chloride solution and we add uh, 500 ml of distilled water to that. Of course, we'd like to know what's the new concentration. So to calculate this one, we'll have to start with something that we know, which is that we're going to get one liter of solution, and then we'll know that every one of those liters gets half a mole of sodium chloride in it, and we'll just decide that, uh, divide that, I'm sorry, by this increased volume here of 1.5 liters in the new diluted solution. So I have the number of moles of solute, the liter of solution, and there's the added volume we put in there. Notice this comes out as 0.33 molar. And more often we want to actually dilute a stock solution to some uh, lower concentration. So in this uh, very real application, we might need a liter of quarter molar hydrochloric acid perhaps to use here in the lab. And we'd like to use a 12 molar concentrated hydrochloric acid to make the uh, dilute solution for lab use. And the question is how much of the concentrated uh, 12 molar solution is needed? Well, here's the one liter of hydrochloric acid that we're gonna need, the dilute one. And in every one liter of that, there's a quarter mole of hydrogen chloride. And of course, from the concentrated solution in every one liter, we get 12 moles of that one. So if you just have a look here at all the units, they all cancel out and we get here the number of moles of solute that we need. And here we just calculate the volume needed of that concentrated solution to get it to us. And it winds up being 21 milliliters of the concentrated hydrochloric acid solution is needed. So that's uh, dilution, pretty straightforward. Let's have a look at evaporation now. The idea is here that you can make a solution more concentrated by removing water or allowing water to evaporate. In this first example, I'd like to think about a 650 milliliter sample of 1.75 molar uh, potassium chloride solution. And that's left out, uh, uncovered over the weekend. This is not a good idea, but anyway, it happened. And the new volume is 481 milliliters. And our question would have to be, what's the concentration after this water has evaporated away? So here's uh, the calculation. Just start with uh, 650 liters of solution that contained all the original moles of solute. Use the molarity here to figure out how many moles of solute you had. And we'll divide that. So here we have the number of moles of solute. Again, we'll divide that by the new volume of solution, which is 481 mils or 0.41 liters. So there's the number of moles divided by the volume. And you get this new more concentrated solution. Uh, the moles come from the original one, okay, and the volume is final anyway. This all shows up here as 2.36 molar potassium chloride. It's more concentrated. No surprise, we evaporated some water. So anyway, the next topic is what happens when we mix solutions together. And really there's a couple cases. I guess the first case to look at is the, really the simple one. And that's the case where two of the same solutions are poured together. So let's have a look at that example. Here we're gonna to pour together and stir and mix of course, one liter of 0.15 molar sucrose solution, table sugar, and two and a half liters of 0.25 molar sucrose solution. So two solutions of sucrose which we'll pour together and wonder what's the new concentration when you mix them all together. So the situation is here we have the two solutions, we're gonna pour them together. So there's the first one, the second one, we'll pour them together and stir them up. So uh, let's have a look here, we've got the one liter of 0.15 molar on the left, the two and a half liters of 0.25 molar on the right, they're both sucrose solutions. And we'll just call them solutions one and two for fun. From solution one, there's one liter, that's 0.15 mole of sucrose from that liter and we get 0.15 mole of sucrose particles. Same thing for solution number two, two and a half liters, quarter mole per liter, 0.625 moles of sucrose from the second solution. So then the concentration is number of moles per volume, obviously, so we'll add the moles. They're both sucrose, divide here by the volume, which is one liter and 2.5 liters, the two volumes we put together. So here we have all the information from the first solution, 
0.15 mole came from there, its volume was one liter. Now from the second solution, two and a half liters at point quarter molar, and then you see the 0.65 mole um, contribution. Divide these guys up and you get 0.22 molar sucrose. No surprise, it's in between the concentrations of the two solutions that were used to pour together. Also, we can mix different solutions together. And this is where it gets a little bit interesting. Uh, we're not going to be talking about reactions just yet. Let's just talk about the concentrations when you put them together. So here, let's have one liter of two molar magnesium chloride and two liters of three molar sodium chloride solution. And uh, no reaction will occur here, but we just want to know what the concentration of each ion is in the final solution. Notice there are three ions, magnesium, uh, two plus ion, sodium plus ion, and chloride minus ion. So we'll have to keep track of each. Here we have the magnesium uh, ion, one liter, two mole per liter, that first solution, and uh, divide by, by the total volume of the solution and get 0 0.667 molar magnesium ion. So the moles came from solution one, the volume is the total volume. For the sodium solution, or the sodium ions, I should say, we'll do the same, but everything will come from solution number two. So two liters, three molar, divide by three liters, and you get two molar sodium ion. Again, from solution two, you got all the sodium ions and the total volume is the sum of them. Now the chloride ions, you have to be a bit careful. From solution number one, the magnesium chloride, you get two um, chloride ions per every one magnesium chloride formula unit that dissociates. So that's this purple uh, now showing the dissociation reaction and the mole ratio there. So be sure you keep your eyes on this dissociation. Every one magnesium chloride gets you two chloride ions. And then uh, down here from the first solution, we have this one from the second solution, we get two liters. It's three mole of sodium chloride per liter. And notice one sodium chloride releases one chloride. So this is all from solution two. And I think you could see very quickly here, two times three is six. So we get six moles of chloride ion here. Four moles from solution one, six moles from solution number two. So the chloride ion solution will be the what? Sum of the, all the moles, right? Divided by the, all the volume. So how's the definition same? So four moles plus six moles. The four moles and one liter came from solution number one. And the six moles and two liters came from solution number two. And of course, if you add those guys up there and divide properly, you get this new solution of chloride ions as 3.33 molar. Anyway, I think you can see that's just about it. Remember, dilution, evaporation, and mixing are all relying on our basic concept, molarity as mole solute per liter. Keep the fundamentals in mind, and you'll have all of this nailed. Thanks, everyone, and see you soon. Have a look at the next two videos in this playlist for more, and stay tuned for our next lesson in Chemistry 11, 2017, Introduction to Stoichiometry. This is my dad's YouTube channel. It's awesome. So like, comment, and subscribe. Hey guys, it's me, Thea, and today's lesson is on mixed... Oh. <laughs> <laughs>